European and U.S. trade officials met in Berlin today. They're looking for support for a transatlantic trade deal. The proposed deal faces growing opposition in Germany. The Trans-Pacific Partnership involves the U.S. and 11 other countries that border the Pacific. Labor unions are opposing the fast-tracking of the trade deal that would give the president the power to negotiate a deal with the other countries and then submit to Congress for an up or down vote. And with the trade fight heating up in Washington, KCRA 3's Edie Lambert was invited to the White House to talk to the president about it. Edie is in Washington, D.C. tonight. She joins us live from the U.S. Capitol. Edie, this trade fight is making for some strange political bedfellows. Fellows, right? Yeah, Kelly, it really is. And this is really considered President Obama's biggest political fight of his last years in office. Let's start with that trade deal itself, and we can show you the countries we're talking about here. The Trans Pacific Partnership would join 12 nations on the Pacific, all joining forces to open markets, reduce tariffs, and set certain standards. This is seen as a way to counter China's growing influence by these countries all teaming up. Businessmen, farmers, and most Republicans believe that it will lead to a lot more exports, which means billions of dollars for our nation. But environmentalists, consumer groups, and unions are worried about impacts, anything from losing jobs to importing dangerous food and products that don't meet our safety standards. So you can see where some of those political alliances stand. Democrats are fighting a Democratic president, and President Obama, who usually gets no support from Republicans, even has the backing of conservative Congressman Tom McClintock of Roseville. I interviewed him just in the last hour, and here's a look at part of that conversation. Two of them. China's writing the rules while we're left behind. Uh, we need the uh, trade promotion authority in order to get back in that game. Trade benefits. Uh, all countries that engage in it, uh, whether it's be between individuals or between nations, uh, the trade benefits both sides or the trade doesn't take place. One side or the other says, no, thank you. Trade's really important, and, and, and this gets us back in the game. Given your long history and, and deep roots of, of nothing but conservative voting, does it make you at all nervous to give what could be considered a win for the president? On the contrary, this is not a win for the president. This is a win for the American economy. Uh, this nation has prospered whenever it's engaged in trade. Uh, it has uh, suffered terribly uh, when it's been gripped by protectionist waves, as we were uh, under Hoover uh, in 1929. Uh, you can go back to Jefferson's time and see what havoc protectionism wreaks on our economy. And what about your own party and a lot of your fellow conservatives? They're not on board with this. Why not? Well, as I said, they don't trust the president, uh, uh, and I don't trust him either. Uh, that's why they ought to be supporting this. So this binds the president to the will of Congress. It sets 150 conditions that he has to meet before Congress will even consider the agreement. Now, of all states, people in California are watching this trade agreement especially closely. It could have an enormous impact, in part because California's economy is so large, and also because of just our geography. Of course, we're a gateway to the Pacific. I'll give you just one example. Last year, our state exported almost $72 billion worth of goods to those Trans-Pacific Partnership nations. So, opening up uh, new uh, uh, trade avenues, uh, reducing some of those uh, trade barriers could pot potentially create a lot of opportunities for California and Sacramento regional farmers and businesses. And again, it could also create a lot of dangers. So a lot of people watching it closely will have more on that angle coming up tonight on our news at 10 and 11. In Washington, D.C., Edie Lambert reporting live. Kelly Gulston, back to you. And while we still have you, Edie, I mean, we are hearing a lot about this trade agreement, but that's not exactly on the table right now, right? There's a step before that can happen. Right. That's one of the interesting things. Congress, within the next couple of weeks, will be voting on whether to fast track the trade agreement itself. And what the president is saying is that he, at this point, is at a stalemate with some of these negotiations because other countries are worried that they'll reach a deal with the U.S. and Congress will go in and line by line delete things that they don't like and make changes that would then have to go back to the negotiating table. So what they're saying is we just want to create a deal and Congress. Congress should either just have an up or down vote, and they don't want Congress to actually get involved in the negotiation. So that's what's at stake with the fast track legislation.
Did you find anything interesting today when you were talking to the Congressman uh, McClintock earlier? I mean, what he's saying is this agreement would bind, yes, this president, Obama, right. but, but subsequent presidents to, to, to following uh, the same set of rules, and then Congress gets the final say. Did you find anything interesting uh, that uh, the Congressman had to say? Well, that's what's been in negotiations right now. So Congress basically, with the fast track legislation, is giving the president marching orders. They're saying, okay, we'll give you the authority to do the deal, but we're going to set the parameters and the goals. Then you come back to us and we'll see if we like the deal or not. So that's why he's comfortable giving the president fast track authority. And it's also important to point out that this fast track legislation would last for three years. So this lasts beyond the Obama mm -hmm. administration and there's also an option to renew for another three. So it, this goes beyond just one president. Yeah, very important decisions to be made here coming up. Edie, we're looking forward to more of your live reports. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. And you can see Edie's interview with the president tomorrow at 5. And just a quick program note, due to NBC's Stanley Cup coverage, our 5 o'clock news will be over on KQCA My 58 tomorrow. That'll be followed by NBC Nightly News.